Who do you want to start with here? Uh, let's start with Trevante. I mean, that's how the show started. So right over there in Afghanistan. Yeah, so Trevante, where we left him, he uh, made it to that town. He he pulled his uh, colleague, his his fellow soldier out there. Was his name uh, Carlos? I forget what the uh, other soldier's name was, but he's dead. <laughs> he's yeah. dead in the back of this little dinky Toyota truck. He's hauling ass out of that uh, town that he was not welcomed in. And um, he ends up going back to their station, right? To their, yeah. uh, what would you call this? They were just their a camp. base. Yeah, yeah. Camp. yeah there, there was really, I was looking for some type of name or something for it. It was just, yeah, no, it was just a, a base built, you know, pop-up base in Afghanistan. I, I guess in the hopes that all of the his fellow soldiers would have maybe went back to, to home base, but uh, it's a ghost town. Nobody or if said. anybody was still there. Right. We were just looking for some familiar face. Yeah, and he didn't. He didn't there. get it at all. No, no. He um. We see him go through, and he's still managing his wound on his shoulder. I, I doubt it's still bleeding out, but it's probably not doing so well. Um. I don't. I didn't see him get any sort of really decent medical treatment on it yet. Besides, you know, from the guy in his camels, um, he certainly didn't get it in town, right? Yeah. No, and he didn't uh, get that at all there. He was on the, the run the whole time. So he's uh, going from room to room. We kind of see some items from where we were first introduced uh, to Trevante in his story. Uh, there's a book. There's a knife he found and like yeah. kind of sticks in his belt. And he's Chavez. just going through Chavez. That's that's, that's his buddy's name. name. Yeah, so I think it was his knife because I think there are his mm. pictures. Right. Yeah. Uh, he also called out on the uh, the radio uh, to no avail. I mean, he spent some time. And it's kind of in this montage of him walking around and trying the radio and he got no response. You and, seem uh, to get frustrated and he just yeah. slams down. Like, I think the last thing I'd want to do is break that radio. <laughs> sure, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that may be your only lifeline. Eventually someone's going to answer. Yeah. Um, and that happened but, in uh, London too. They, they broke the radio. Kind of oh yeah. I mean, episode. well that, that, that punk Monty picked it up and chucked it yeah. against the rocks. <laughs> I think someone needs to chuck him in against a rock, but <laughs> old Monty. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, poor little kid that doesn't want to go home. <laughs> uh, we'll dress that a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we see you know, Trevante here, and he starts freaking out. I mean, can you imagine the the mental wear being where he's got to be? All his guys are gone. He comes back to the base. And nobody's there. And then no one's answering this radio. So he he's just like he's the last guy on the planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's just go ahead and watch how he responds when no one's responding to him. Dude, could you imagine emergency evacuation, unknown hostels after what he's seen? Right. And then all his guys are gone. A lot of unknowns there on that sheet. Uh, something freaked him out. I mean, I would have been freaked out already. Just looking at the thing that they were firing on. Yeah. Didn't look like any technology from Russia or China or anything. I don't know if he was just like, you know, too stunned to really start thinking of if it was alien technology. No, but it was Amazon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're delivering a package. Yeah, <laughs> their drones got really big, um, big and ominous. But yeah, I guess this is some some kind of confirmation that there's more going on here um, than he knew about because he starts freaking out that he got word. I guess he's also freaked out that this seems to be more of a uh, widespread event. Um, if they were getting notices, you know, it, it, it also may be a confirmation to him that what he's seen with his eyes is something that's really going on. Right. You, you think about it. If you're in the middle of the desert and something like that happens, you're going to question sure. what you just seen. There's no way I just seen Independence Day happening in front of my eyes. All <laughs> right. So, I mean, there, there's going to be some of that. And then when you all of a sudden realize, oh, man, can you can you fly that ship? Uh, you know, this type of situation going on. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be messed up. Um, so what does he do? He ends up calling, um, after he, you know, he's totally frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. He buries Chavez. He takes the time to bury yeah. him, give a little kind of prayer, even though he didn't really know, quite know what to say. I think it's more, he was just talking to him. It's like, you know, being around death as much as we're around, you yeah. think you'll get, you'll get used to it. Yeah. And then he makes a promise to him. And I don't remember exactly what that promise was. All, all that he was going to go home. 
Yeah, that was the promise. Yeah, I guess the last words that Chavez told him were that he needs to go home. Uh, we're in a war now. I guess a different kind of war, and he needs to go home. But at and, that time, uh, I think he was referring to the relationship that we really don't understand. We don't know what this relationship is. Yeah, we don't know if it's a you know a family member that there was a strange. We don't know if it's a wife. Uh, we really, I mean, it's probably a wife girlfriend type situation, but they really don't allude to it. Yeah, and he's determined. He's basically made this decision um, as he's bearing Chavez. He's like, "You're right. I'm going to follow your directions. I'm going to go home." Uh, in the moment, it totally makes sense. Like, there's something broader going on here. There's yeah. something worldwide. Where else would you want to be? You don't want to be stuck in the deserts of Afghanistan. You want to be yeah. near your family, your your people back home. When things are falling apart, go home. Yeah, and uh, which is a big deal. I mean, going AWOL, you know, if this was normal circumstances. Yeah, that can, that then can lock you up. <laughs> absolutely, but uh, we're definitely not in normal circumstances. Yeah, no, no, I don't think they have no idea what circumstances they are. And how will he <laughs> yeah. even get home? For that right. matter, he may be stuck over in the Middle East regardless. Yeah, who knows how he actually accomplishes that. 